This game, man. The short and sweet of it is that Hades 2 is amazing. This is exactly what a good sequel should look like. It's got the same feel and vibe as Hades 1, keeps a very similar style of gameplay and mechanics, and at the same time is able to make everything new. This is just a first impressions from the first few days of gameplay, so I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler light as possible. But even then, I think there's a ton of base level stuff that we can break down, so you can see where the game's made some changes and why these feel like an improvement over the first Hades game. Now, obviously, some of this is going to be a little bit subjective, but I'd like to think my 500 hours speedrunning Hades Hades 1 gives me some kind of ability to talk about the difference. Obviously, the first thing we should talk about is combat. That's what we're all here for and makes up like 90% of the game. Hades has great story and characters and that holds true in Hades 2, but we're here to fight our patriarchal figures. Zagreus fought his dad, Hades, and Melinaway has to fight their granddaddy. It's amazing how much Supergiant has been able to change while still making the combat feel like Hades. It hasn't lost any energy and impact. I'd even say that Hades 2 is a little bit harder and even more chaotic at times, but Malinaway's base abilities are quite a bit stronger than Zagreus's, and they've even managed to make the base weapon attack combos feel good to use. Hades 1 basically boiled down to dash striking on every aspect. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, it was always optimal to dash as much as possible. The sword Stygius especially did almost no damage with its base sword attacks. In contrast, the default attack combinations of weapons actually feel really good to use and do an appropriate amount of damage. This is definitely a good thing because Malinaway is restricted to a single dash, so you can't just spam it and be safe in the way that you could in the first Hades game. Thinking through your positioning and taking a more tactical approach to a fight is a lot more important, especially since Mel has a much wider array of tools at her disposal. Which brings us to our next big change. Not only can Mel do attacks, specials, and a wildly different cast, holding any of those buttons down performs a more powerful version of itself that consumes a new magic resource. This gives you a much wider variety of playstyles to lead into, and this is even reflected in boon choices. Where gods will offer you power-ups for your base abilities, these more powerful omega attacks, or both. This change is especially big for casts, which are now a ward like circle you place on the ground instead of the projectiles Zagreus had. The cast roots enemies in place, which just plays even more into the fact that taking advantage of positioning and controlling the battlefield is a lot more important in Hades 2. The last big change to Malinaway's kit is her sprint. Holding down the dash button will put Mel into a sprint, which just, oh, I love a sprint. I've seen quite a few people complaining about it, but I think it just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's great for getting around hazards and attacks, repositioning and weaving in and out of combat. There are a lot bigger area of effect attacks and a lot more bullet timiness, so a fast movement option is actually a big help. This game does feel a bit harder than the first one as well. Enemies seem to have more health and deal more damage, and they have harder to predict attacks, so you really have to learn their movesets. There's a bit of a learning curve for what boons work with which weapons, but once you start to get a handle on it, you can definitely make really strong weapon and boon combinations. There's no question that you can cut through enemies just as much as you could in Hades 1, but I do think boons are less universally good, so much like the combat itself, there's a much bigger incentive to understand and think through your decisions because they'll really pay off if you can do so well. The weapon and weapon aspect system are basically the same from Hades 1. Of course, this time with totally new weapons, they can all interact with your cast and Omega attacks differently. All the weapons so far seem pretty solid. The one that I really don't like, other people do seem to like. So there's a nice range of choice, and everybody should be able to probably find a few different weapons that they enjoy using. I'll probably do a bigger breakdown on weapons in a future video. And this early access game actually has more content than the first Hades game, technically. There's not as much story stuff going on, but we have a full full four biome run like the first game, as well as a separate two biome run and challenge runs that take you through particular parts of the other biomes with specific loadouts. And even that primary four biome run has some novelty to it that I didn't really expect. Even though the formula from Hades 1 is still pretty consistent there, it definitely has its own unique spin to it as well. And the music goes hard. Right from the title screen, you hear a track that sounds pretty similar to the one from the first Hades game, but then you hear the new beats kick in and it really sets your expectation for the rest of the soundtrack and it does not disappoint. A lot of the singles are on Spotify now under Darren Korb, so you can check them out for yourself if you're not already listening to them in-game. And I don't want to say anything spoilery about the story, but what I can say is there's definitely a whole new story that feels just as fleshed out as the first games, with a bunch of new characters, returning characters, and because of all these different paths, there's more characters overall. Of course, I can see why people might still prefer Zagreus to Melinaway in terms of their personality, and that's just a personal preference thing, but I do think that Mel is an equally good character in a different time. The way this game is set, the world is a lot more full of strife compared to how it was when Zagreus was going on his own personal quest, and you can definitely see how this is represented both in the art and the tone of the overall game. There's also a much more varied resource grind in Hades 2. Now, this change 
range probably isn't for everyone, but I actually like that there's a lot more things to gather instead of just the darkness and gems from the first game. It makes you actually have to think about it and make decisions run to run. I don't know, it's just more compelling to me. I really think that basically everything in the game has been designed so that you have to think and make decisions a little bit more. Personally, I love this change, but I can see some people preferring the simple fast pace of Hades 1. Supergiant Games has absolutely nailed it with this sequel. This is so polished and full of content that it barely even feels like an early access game. This is exactly what I think a sequel should be. It shares the same core fundamentals with its predecessor, while also improving things across the board and carving out its own identity with its changes. But no change is so big that it fundamentally changes the game from what made the first one good. A big part of it is that we're just getting more of the same things that made the first game amazing. I'm looking forward to getting through the resource grind over the next week or two and getting into speedrunning the game. You'll be able to catch some of that on the channel if you subscribe and hit that notification bell. But I honestly just want to get back to playing. So I'll see you in the next one. Death to Crimson.